you would like some helpful resources on different topics, check out my website, robinbrownfield.com. Also, on that website, there's a place that you can leave some contact information and a comment if you got some kind of a comment about this message or another message or just a question in general. You can use that, and I will get back with you and, and respond uh, to your question. And all of that is on robinbromfield.com. You see, Joni Erickson dives into P Chesapeake Bay, a strong, athletic girl, and emerges moments later, a paralyzed young girl from the neck down. She was going swimming, and she dove in head first, and in a twinkling of an eye, Everything changed. She was athletic. She was young. She, she was at the peak of life. And all of a sudden, all of that life got taken away from her. And she was a paralyzed girl from her neck down for the rest of her life. You see, Johnny prayed for healing. She, she had a strong faith in the Lord God. She knew that God could heal. And she was convinced that God was going to heal her. So she prayed fervently that God would heal her and would restore her health. And she believed that so strongly that she even had a healing service to restore her health. She invited friends and she said, come and be a part of this. You're going to see an amazing thing. You're going to see a miracle happen. God is going to heal me. I know he's going to heal me. Come be a part of this service and watch God work. All of that was to no avail. Joni remained paralyzed. And she's paralyzed to this day. She's not bitter. She's not revengeful. She has no hard feelings about God. She just realizes that that was God's will for her life. And because of that, she has accepted that she is a paralyzed, that she is paralyzed, and that she is to glorify God in that paralyzed situation. And she's done wonders for people that are in similar situations that she is in. She's helped those that are in wheelchairs and can't care for themselves. She's given them hope in the Lord Jesus Christ that he is the one that will heal. And she lives forward and she looks forward to the day that she will be in heaven, completely healed of her being paralyzed. You see, should we trust God alone for healing? Is that what we should do? Should we Trust him alone for healing. And another question is, does God miraculously heal today? Is that something he does today? Or is that something that he did in the Old Testament and the New Testament, but not here today? You see, the issue of the spirit and divine healing is a hot topic today. You don't believe that? Just turn on your TV to any of the Christian broadcast stations. And you'll see healing services after healing services where glory is given to the Spirit of God in these healing services. And they're saying that it's the Spirit of God that is doing this healing in all of these services. Well, today we're going to investigate this topic and get some guidance. From the Word of God. Get some guidance as far as what does the Word of God have to say about sickness and healing. Let's look at several sources of manifestations or uh, alleged manifestations. Uh, some of these are uh, alleged manifestations of healing and others are in true healing manifestations. First, the manifestation could be self-induced. It could be something that the person has brought upon themselves. It is something that they 
brought into their life, and it's a stressful time. It, it can bring uh, physical handicaps. You see, in today's stressful world, a great number of people have psychosomatic illnesses. It is a well-known fact that there's a lot of psychosomatic illnesses in our world today. And no matter where you turn, you can find people that suffer greatly from these and have not only mental conditions, but also physical conditions as a result of these psychosomatic illnesses. They have physical illness brought about by some mental disturbance. They have a mental disturbance, and that mental disturbance results in a physical handicap. And it also could be an emotional disturbance. They could be emotionally upset, emotionally distraught. But yet, with both the mental and the emotional disturbances, these people have very serious physical problems. That is a fact. And by resolving that cause of that problem, a supposed miraculous healing occurs. They remove that psychosomatic, emotional, or a mental disturbance, and they give glory to God saying that that was the Spirit of God moving in their life. Well, the, the change is real. They, they do go from a physical illness to a, a normal life. The change is real, and it is wonderful. It's a wonderful change. It's something that is stupendous that they are able to move about and live a wonderful life without that physical disturbance anymore. But it's not a supernatural healing. You see, second, the phenomenon could be the result of highly emotional meetings. You see, history is filled with those who spend more of their time on hype than on the Spirit of God. As you look at these radio TV stations and listen on radio stations, on a lot of them, you, you can just feel the, the exuberance of, of hype in the air. It is an environment, it is a condition that is very susceptible in the meeting. And there again, they, they use such things as positive thinking. They will use positive reinforcement to uh, tell this person that they are well, they have this physical condition, and they will use positive thinking to get them to think, no, you don't have that condition, you're really well. And another thing they will use is hypnosis. And hypnosis is uh, very effective in those types of situations. Or they could use just plain old brainwashing. They could brainwash that person so that they would think that they are well. And because they use positive thinking or hypnosis or brainwashing or maybe a mixture of those, they have very effective results. And the results are very real. They are things that they change from one supposed sickness to being well and they feel wonderful but yet the result is not a miraculous healing by the Spirit of God. You see a, a third could actually be the source of being demonic. Never think something is heaven sent just because it appears to be so. Don't think just because it looks like the real deal, like it looks like it came from heaven, that it comes from heaven. It may, but then again, it may not. Just because it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, talks like a duck, 
It may not be a duck. <laughs> you see, just because someone claims to represent Christ does not mean that he does represent Christ. Just because he makes that claim doesn't give him any kind of degree that he is representing Christ. And just because he shows power does not mean that that is power from heaven. Doesn't mean that that person is sent from God. We get some help in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 and 14. It says this, For such are false prophets, false apostles, Deceitful workers transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Let's camp on those two verses just for a second. Notice in verse 13 it says, For such are false apostles. What are false apostles? The ones that are deceitful workers, they're deceitful, and look what it says, transforming themselves, these false apostles, transform themselves into apostles of Christ. They look like they're apostles of Christ, but they are not. They are false apostles. And then 14 goes on to say, and no wonder for Satan himself, Satan himself now, he transforms himself into an angel of light. He looks like the light. He sounds like the light. He does everything, but he is not the light. Do not be fooled. Satan has power. He has lots of power. So take him seriously. And Satan will do whatever he can to deceive both the saved and the unsaved person alike. It will look like it comes from heaven, but we don't be deceived. It is not from heaven. Well, that leads us to a four source, and that is that it actually could be from God. You see, the scriptures are full of situations where God heals people in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. So the manifestation could actually be miraculous. It could be. And thus, in fact, the healing can very well be an act of God coming from the throne of God down to earth and transforming a miracle here on earth. Yes, uh, God does heal today. He heals today by miracles. He, he will, in instances, come down and miraculously heal people. And it is a true healing from the Spirit of God. And oftentimes, He will come to us through not only miracles, but He may choose a different option, using doctors and medicine and drugs to bring about healing. And there again, in all of those, we need to give glory to God for the healing that takes place. Well, let's look at some truths worth living that we have found here today. God has the power to heal. We know that. We know that he has the power to heal, but he may choose not to do so. If he chooses not to do so, then allow him to work in your life and accept that, that it is not his will. Do not get bitter. Do not grow uh, apart from God. Grow closer to him and realize that one day you will be healed when you're in heaven. God has a power to heal. He may use medical ways to do that. He may use doctors and drugs. And if he does, Thank him and praise him and glorify him, for that in itself is a healing. And God has a power to heal. He may use miraculous means to do so. There again, give him the glory in all that he does. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you that uh, healings do happen today, Lord. And no matter if that healing is miraculous by the Spirit of God, 
through doctors or drugs. We thank you and we praise you for it. And Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that may be listening to this that need a miraculous healing. They are in dire straits. They're in physical predicaments that need healing. But through your divine grace, you say that you are not going to heal them. Father, give them an extra amount of grace to stay focused on you, to stay focused on the Word of God, and to draw closer to you, realizing that one day in heaven they will be healed. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. Um, next Tuesday I will have another broadcast in this series. Until then, have a great week.